Welcome, Be Holy, Be Perfect community. Be Holy, Be Perfect community. Welcome and bless you and may we all bless the Lord with all our soul and all our mind and all our being. May we continually always bless the Lord and learn to love the Lord more and more and love the brethren, to love the brethren. We are finna venture on to a new uh, new teaching, not a new teaching, just another way of looking at from the Apostle Peter, who we know was uh, Simon Kifer, Simon Peter. And we just thank God for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit where we, when we look at this, we will see the heart of Peter. And remember, Peter uh, was crucified upside down. So when we read the, the scriptures, when we read the word of God uh, from the apostle, we have to also understand the amount of stress and persecution that they were under. And God still used them to give us the word to give us a way of living to give us inspiration and encouragement and peter his message is about obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of jesus he it is about obedience be obedient and be sprinkled with the blood of the lamb and this is just take us back to the the Jewishness, the Hebraicness of Peter, because he is associating the sacrifice, a living sacrifice, us the uh, stones built in to Christ, uh, with what? <laughs> with the sprinkling of the blood, the sacrifice, with the giving of the Torah, with the people being consecrated unto God. So we see so much of. Uh, well, we have to go there. We have to go there. And this is the uh, word of the Lord from what we call the Old Testament. And this is what he's referring to. See, you know, to understand and love God, we have to accept the whole word of God. And we have to make a distinction between the different laws of God and who they are applicable to who they apply to. So as we continue to go on and move on through the grace of God, which give us the strength and the ability to do what? To be holy and be perfect. I just love that. Yes, yes, be holy, be perfect. Let's be encouraged. We're coming from 1 Peter, 1 Peter, 1 Peter, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and here Peter, an apostle, a special messenger, personally cho chosen representative of, of Yeshua, Mashiach, Jesus Christ, to those elect, both Jews and Gentiles, believers, both Jewish and Gentile believers. Remember now that the Gentiles are coming into the faith of Messiah, the faith of Messiah. And we have to know that a lot of these Gentiles were not just total pagans, but they were uh, no-highs that followed the no-high laws, the no-high codes. And that's a, a whole different story uh, uh, that we can get into in later studies. He said, but who live as exiles scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia Minor, and Bithynia, who are chosen, who are chosen. Now, let's uh, understand what the elect means. To be elect means that we are chosen by the Holy Spirit. That means we're convicted by the Holy Spirit. We're born again by the Holy Spirit. And we are what? We are now obedient to the government of the most high God, the only true and wise God. That's what that means. Now, we can look at the elect as God's chosen people, the Jewish people that where he gave the covenant at Mount Sinai. But when we are 
come into the knowledge of Mashiach, we are engrafted into uh, the commonwealth of God. Now, that is a whole different teaching, but let us stay on, on point. First Peter 1 and 2, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and to be sprinkled with his blood, to obedient, to be obedient to God the Father, to be obedient to God the Father. We must be obedient to God, God our Father. And what? To be sprinkled with the blood. Now, what is the significance of the sprinkling of the blood? The sprinkling of the blood was the agreement uh, that sealed the covenant. It was uh, the agreement that sealed the covenant. It was the sanctif a part of the sanctification, the set apartness process. May grace and peace, that special sense of spiritual well-being, be yours in increasing abundance as you walk closely with God, as we walk closely with God. Now, what is grace doing here? Grace and peace work together. Grace and peace work together. Why? Because grace empowers our spiritual well-being. See, we have to learn the purpose of grace and not just use uh, the word grace as a as a get out or rationalizing card to commit continue to commit sin. He said, and may what? May your well-being increase in abundance. So this means that, look, we don't have to uh, remain sick. We don't have to remain afflicted. We don't have to remain uh, in infirmities. Look, he give us a well-being. He give us uh, a well-being in wholeness in abundance. So we should look for wholeness in abundance. The blood of Jesus. Now remember that the blood of Jesus makes us whole. The blood of Jesus cleanses us. The blood of Jesus sanctify sanctifies us because it is a part of the what sanctifying set aparting process. Okay, so and this is why he's talking about that. He's bringing this into visual explanation and principle to the people that he is talking to and see if they were really uh, uh, Gentiles or what we call uh, the righteous Gentiles, then they understood exactly what Peter was talking about. But if they were not, and if they was, hey, living on the crime scene, then look, they, they, he, they had to be trained. And that's what a lot of us need to be trained into the government of God so that we are know uh, if we're breaking the law of God. First Peter 1 and 3, blessed, gratefully, gratefully praised and adored be the God and Father of our Lord and Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundance and boundless mercy have caused us, listen, caused us to be born again, caused us to be born again, that is to be born from above, John 3 and 3, that is to be born from above, spiritually transformed, spiritually transformed, renewed and set apart for his what? For his purpose to an everlasting, ever living hope and confident assurance through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What? Now, where do we get our assurance from? From the resurrection of Jesus, our Mess my Messiah. So let's kind of break this down quickly here. He said, what? To be born again, he calls us. See, we're not just, see, God have to cause us to be born again. It's not just a, a, a repeat after me. It's not just you say this. There is a something actually going on, a creative process going on uh, when we make covenant with God, when we submit to the will of God. It's a spiritual transformation. It's a renewing of our spirit, bringing us uh, back into unity with God. It's a renewing of our mind, a transforming of our mind. And when we are transformed and renewed and what? That shows 
The evidence of that is what? A set apartness for his purpose. See, everything that God, uh, statement that God made, at the end of the statement, what? We will find the evidence. We will find the proof of what he said, how to verify in our own life what he has said and what it should look like, what we should look like. So when we read the word, we should understand. Now, let me give you an example where he said, who, according to his abundant and boundless mercy, has caused us to be what? To be born again. Now, what did he say? To be born again. Okay, now what would be the evidence of that? The new birth, that new birth. Spiritually transformed. We will be spiritually transformed. We will be renewed. We will be set apart for his purpose. And our conduct and our speech and our action would verify that. It would be proof and evidence. You see what I'm saying? So when we read the scriptures, let the Holy Spirit teach us that how we should look when he says something. He's expecting us to become what he say. You understand what I'm saying? In according with his word. 1 Peter 1 and 4, born anew into an inheritance which is imperishable beyond the reach of change and undefined and unfading reserved in heaven for you reserved in heaven for you now let's not go into the futuristic of this because it is twofold in other words uh two prone we have to look at this in a way that we can allow this to be used and manifested here on earth in our bodies in our mind spirit soul and body so we can't just look and say, oh, this is for a future heaven. No, we have to realize that we live in two uh, worlds, in two different dimensions. We live in Christ. He is what? In heaven. He's also in earth. So there is dimensions in the spiritual realm that we have to always be uh, aware of. They say born anew and we're born anew what? By the spirit of who? Of God. You say beyond the reach of change. So God is not going to change. You know, we have to change to what he purpose for our lives, for what his attributes look like. This is what he's saying. Why? Because when we are, when we are born again, we must what? Be undefined and unfading. Why? Because we then become an eternal being, which we already are, but you can be eternal, but you can be eternally separated from God. But he's saying that the breath of life that we breathe every day will be transformed into a holy breath uh, from God, just as we were before the sin, the disobedience of Adam. Now just understand that the disobedience of Adam was sin. So sin is not going to remain in God's presence. And he give us an example of that. And when we look at that, we ought to say, wow, oh, this is, I, you know, if we can imagine what happens when we sin, you know, those uh, um, flaming wars uh, in between us and God, in between us and God. So we, you know, he give us so much uh, information on how we can see uh, where we at and how we are aligned or not aligned with him. So the new birth, you know, the new birth is a transformation as you looked at the image, you know, and um, this is a darkness. You move from darkness into light, you know, and this is what God is talking about. We move from being uh, under the control of the prince of darkness to what? Under the control of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, who is ruled by who? The prince of peace. First Peter 1 Peter 1.5, who are being protected and shielded by the power of God through what? Through your faith for salvation is ready to be revealed to you in the last times in the last times of what in the last days in the last centuries in the last minute it could be your last minute it could be your last second it could be my last minute it could be my last second and this is what he's second and this is what he's saying we you know we need we should be protected and so i have this image here because the dome of god the protection of god is just like a dome it's just like a shadow remember psalm 91 those that dwell under the shadow of the almighty we a shield you know he protect us from the enemy if what if we're obedient see those conditions are there 
And, you know, we want to think that God uh, loves us unconditionally. Let's understand that God loves uh, his creation. Now, he don't love the sin of his creation. He, that's why he kicked them out of the garden. So let's be real about that, you know. And he wants us to be reconciled. So he went to great levels of extenuating circumstances to bring us back into uh, his presence. And not just his presence, but that we could communicate with him, but we must communicate with him as he is the king of the universe, the king of all creation, not just like he's our buddy and uh, he's our, you know, like our hangout guy. No, that's not, that's totally disrespectful of God, but I'm not going to get on that soapbox because that's not what we're talking about. We are being protected and shielded by the power of God through what? Through our faith for salvation. So it's faith for the salvation is deliverance. Uh, it's a constant, constant deliverance. See, it's not a one-time shot. It's a constant deliverance, and it takes faith, the God kind of faith, to do that. So let's understand what he's saying here. How precious is this word for us? And to know that to be obedient, we must be obedient. Be obedient. Be obedient. Uh be obedient to God's word and purpose for our life. Be obedient and be thankful for each breath that God give us. You know, it, it, it's a breath that God give us to live. I mean, it's just so uh, merciful of God and his loving kindness that endures forever. We should constantly just be thankful. So let's be thankful and let's in that being thankful and grateful, you know, the evidence should be obedience, obedience. And let's receive the sprinkling of the blood of the lamb, which what? Which sanctifies us and set us apart. Let's not trample the blood of the Lord on the feet. That is just so ugly. You know, uh, let's respect the Lord. And, okay, I'm on this soapbox. Let's respect the Lord and give him honor. Give him honor with our conduct, with our words and with our deeds. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he shine his face upon you and give you everlasting peace, give you the peace that surpasses all knowledge and understanding, the peace that make us truly whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord, our King, our Maker. Amen, amen.